What's going on everybody? Welcome back to a new video of the Point After Podcast. Today we're going to focus on just the fantasy aspect of everything. Uh, this is prior to us recording the weekly podcast of the NFL. All we're going to do is talk about in this video is who to start and who to sit in week four of the NFL season. Matthew, how you doing, buddy? Doing great, man. Uh, got a few uh, few good people this week that I think can put up a lot of points and, uh, and some people that I think... Uh, not going to do what they're traditionally used to the last three weeks. So looking forward to talking about it. Hopefully to help some of you guys out in fantasy. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. Yeah, there's a lot of good games this week. There's a lot of games that I think we can agree on could probably go either way. I would say probably five or six of them. Um, you know, everyone has a favorite to win that game, and somebody's projected to win it. But when you look at it on paper and the way the teams have performed the past three weeks, they kind of go – Either way, so this is what this is what that segment's for to help you guys out um, in your fantasy and who to start and who not to start in those tough matchups. Um, we'll start with the love hates. Uh, we'll start with uh, you want to do all the loves first and then do the hates, or you just want to do it by position. Uh, either way, we can uh, let's do it by position. Okay. All right. So starting out, I got we're gonna start with the quarterback, obviously. Um, my starter for this week is Lamar at Washington. Um, I got him because of his piss poor performance against the Chiefs this week, throwing for 97 yards. I feel like um, he's definitely going to play with a chip on his shoulder against Washington. And you know, Washington's got a good D line, um, but outside of that, I, there's secondary is a little suspect, and I think they're going to try to take advantage of that. Um, feed Mark Ingram and J.K. Dobbins out of the backfield a good bit. And I see Lamar putting up probably at least 200 passing yards this week against uh, the Washington football team. Yeah, any, anybody playing Washington is probably going to have a fairly decent game statistic-wise. But my quarterback start this week, uh, my love, is Aaron Rodgers. Monday night versus the Atlanta Falcons. Atlanta's got pretty sure the dead last ranked secondary in the league. Um, anybody that's played them has put up, you know, phenomenal numbers. Um and Rodgers has thrown for a minimum two touchdowns in all three of his games. So I'm liking at home Aaron Rodgers versus the Falcons. Yeah, I can see that one being a good pick. And, I, you know, you also kind of make the case for uh, Matt Ryan to be a decent pick, you yeah. know, even though they're 0-3 and should be 2-1. and But, you know, Matt Ryan's a top three passer in the league. Um, so that's going to be an interesting game. Uh, yeah. well, what about your hate? Who you got at quarterback? Uh, well, given the situation, uh, I'm not real sure if this guy's going to be playing Sunday, but my hate is Carson Wentz at San Francisco. Um, the last three weeks, San Francisco's only given up an average of like 200 and I think 12 yards passing. And, uh, you know, Carson Wentz has not looked good at all in recent weeks. I would not be surprised if Jalen Hurts gets a lot more playing time than he did this past Sunday. But uh, given the games in San Francisco – and San Francisco's got a top 10 D. I'm going with Carson Wentz. Yeah, I could I could also see Jalen Hurts playing a lot this week. He played, I think, two snaps at running back two weeks ago and then one snap at quarterback last week. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I could see Jalen Hurts coming in. Carson has struggled, like you said, and for that reason, you know, I don't think the Eagles even have a chance to, to win the game on Sunday. It don't really matter who's at, who's at quarterback um, for the 49ers, but, you know, I, I wouldn't expect I would expect to see Jalen here soon if Carson doesn't turn things around. Um, but staying in uh, California, I've got Daniel Jones as my sit against the Rams. Uh, I don't imagine a lot of people would start Daniel Jones anyway, but I think with Saquon out, all the pressure is on Daniel Jones to perform. And going up against a very very talented Rams squad who's looked pretty good and their only losses to the Bills, who arguably arguably a top five team in the NFL. Um, I would definitely keep Daniel Jones on the bench. I agree. That's a good one. We'll move, we'll move on to the running back. Um, I'll do my hate first for this week. Um, I got Miles Gaskin, you know, Dolphins running back who performed pretty well last week against Jacksonville Jaguars, but mm-hmm. this week going up against the NFC favorite to make the Super Bowl or one of them, the Seattle Seahawks, I, I definitely would not put him in the starting lineup. Uh, Seattle looks good, top to bottom, all around. Um, you know, Zeke had a good performance last week, 
but Miles Gaskin isn't anywhere near what Zeke is. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep Miles Gaskin on the bench. Uh, my hate this week is Jonathan Taylor um, at Chicago Bears. Chicago Bears traditionally has got a good run stop and defense. I know they gave up uh, one touchdown, I think, last week to Todd Gurley. But uh, I'm going with Jonathan Taylor because I know last week he was projected to score, I want to say, 17 points. And this week it's dropped to 14.6. And uh, I think maybe he gets in for a score. But as far as yards-wise, I don't think he breaks the 60-70 mark. So, uh, for a top 10, top 15 back, my hate this week's going to Jonathan Taylor. Yeah, Taylor or Jonathan Taylor's one of those guys that dep- it kind of just depends on who the Colts play, whether his production value, what it, what's that's going to be. He's a solid player, um, but the Colts don't really have a lot of offensive weapons that will open things up for him. You have T.Y. Hilton, yep. uh, Michael Pittman's out for a couple weeks, so... You know, a lot of focus will be on Jonathan Taylor and trying to stop him and force Philip Rivers to throw the ball. So I think that's a good one, a good one as yeah. well. Another reason why I chose him to throw this stat out there was, uh, you know, week two they played the Vikings coming off from Marlon Mack injury. We, everybody knew Taylor was going to get a lot more touches. And uh, the Vikings are not – they don't have the strongest rush defense in the league. And uh, he had 26 attempts in that game, whereas this past week against the Jets, they have a pretty decent front seven. He only had 13 touches and about a seven-point difference in fantasy in those two games. So that was another reason why I went with him for my hate this week. Yeah, that's always got to take into consideration somebody that um, how many touches they're going to get per game, whether that's yeah. just receiving or receiving out of the backfield or um, just rushing the ball. Um, so I, my love and starting for this week, I got Joe Mixon. Um, the Bengals going up against the Jaguars. Looking at the performance that Miles Gaskin had last week, uh, I think you can make a good case for Joe Mixon to put up 20 plus points. Um, especially, you know, Joe Burrow's got to get some help. Joe Burrow's looks phenomenal in his first three games, but mm-hmm. the, his O line is going to get him killed unless somebody else can uh, take the load off of Joe. Um, I want to say he's threw the ball over a hundred times, probably somewhere in the 125 range through the first three games. Um, so I'm expecting Joe Mixon to get a, a big workload this week, seeing what Miles Gaskin did last week. Um, and Joe Mixon is also due for a touchdown. He don't have a touchdown receiving or rushing all season. You're going into week four. He's going to find the end zone this week in some capacity. Yep. Uh, you know, speaking of Jacksonville and Cincinnati, that brings me to <clears throat> my love this week is James Robinson. Out of nowhere, he's just came in, you know, and, and this is from a PPR standpoint. He's came in and uh, put up 10-plus his first week, uh, 20 points week two, 30 points last week with two scores. He scored in each of his last two games. And uh, he's getting a minimum 15 touches a game. And uh, he's also recorded, let's see, three receptions in week two and six receptions last week. So if you're a PPR guy, James Robinson is definitely a guy that I would have in your lineup if he is on your roster. Yeah, PPR is all about receptions. Uh, I like I like James Robinson too, but speaking of receptions and PPR, get into your wide receivers. Who you got as your start for this week? My starter is Robert Woods versus New York Giants. Uh, New York, the Giants have given up roughly 38, 40 points to wide receivers in their last uh, three weeks, and they're ranked 27th in the league secondary-wise. Excuse me, 21st. And uh, Robert Woods has had two big games the last two weeks. I look for him to get a lot more uh, action this week, playing a weaker team. So uh, I'm going with him as my love. Yeah, I'm going to stay with the Rams with you. I'm going with Cooper Cup. Uh, Cooper Cup, I did, a, I did a TikTok video on that earlier today if you guys want to go check that out um, as a wide receiver one option. So for that reason, I'm going to stay with him. He's uh, got nine receptions last week. He's averaging 76 yards per game. Uh, and, you know, they're going up against the Giants, who has struggled all year. Going to struggle the rest of the year, too. So I've got Cooper Cup. And I think we both both like the Rams wide receivers and Sean McVay's offense with Jared Goff. Um, yeah, both and, of those guys could go for 15, 20 plus, I believe, yeah. depending on touchdowns. But yep. I think they'll get their fair share of receptions. Yeah, especially with Todd Gurley going now, you know, receivers are getting a lot more looks just because you don't yeah. have that A factor running back. Um, but staying with wide receivers, I got uh, Valdez Scantlin as my sit for this week. He uh, He's only averaging three catches per game. 
and he just don't seem to be Aaron Rodgers' top target right now, even with Devontae Adams out. I'm not sure if he's playing this week, uh, Devontae, but Lazard uh, had a really good performance against New Orleans, and he seems to be emerging as a top target for Aaron Rodgers. So uh, with Valdez Scantlin only getting three catches per game over the last three games, um, I would I would definitely set him. Last week he had one catch for five yards. Not sure how many targets he had, um, but if you're only catching the one ball and you call it for five yards, I uh, Something's going on there. Um, so until Aaron starts targeting him more, I would probably leave him on the bench. Yeah, and uh, another another person that I think is going to have a pretty rough game this week is Terry McLaurin for the, the uh, Washington football team. They're playing Baltimore Ravens, who in fact did get you know smoked last week by Super Bowl MVP uh, Patrick Mahomes. But that being said, Dwayne Haskins hasn't broke the 16-point mark. Uh, he's only got four touchdowns on the year. He's four turnovers as well. Um, four of those coming uh, – actually, five turnovers and four of them coming last week versus the Browns. Three interceptions, one fumble. Um, I look for Terry McLaurin, who's traditionally a top 15 receiver. Uh, PPR, I look for him to have a pretty, pretty rough game. And I also think the Ravens are out for blood after getting embarrassed last week. So – Terry McLaurin is going to be my sit on this week. Yeah, for receiver. Yeah, I don't know that I would trust any Washington receiver with the way uh, Dwayne Haskins played last week either. Seemed a, a little bit inaccurate through two or three picks. Um, just he's going to, have to figure things out, or Alex Smith is going to replace him rather quickly. Um, but as we move in the tight ends, I'm going to touch on what you said earlier with Carson Wentz struggling um, and the potential to see Jalen Hurts. I think. One way Carson Wentz is going to try to find find his groove this year is he's going to feed a, feed a lot and lean on Zach Ertz a lot. Uh, so I got Zach Ertz as my start for this week at tight end, just because you know he's a solid target and I think Wentz has got to go got to go to a guy that he trusts a lot to find his groove and to get back in the swing of things for the season. Um, mm-hmm. So I think Zach Ertz is going to be that guy that gets him going. Uh, so I'm going to go with starting Zach Ertz for this week and at least until. Carson gets going. Yeah, I agree. That's a good one. Uh, my tight end stardom this week is Jared Cook at the Detroit Lions. Uh, the Lions have given up a lot of points to tight ends the last three weeks. And Jared Cook's only projected to score around 10 points. And he hasn't actually had a breakout game, I don't believe, this season. But that could very well change, you know, like last year. Um, he was a top five uh, tight end. And Detroit being the team they are, and even if Michael Thomas is back, I look at uh, Jared Cook in a lot of touches, might even get a score. So I think they'll be looking for him a lot in the red zone. And, uh, yeah, he's going to be my stardom this week at Detroit, Jared Cook. Yeah, I like that. I think, um, you know, everyone's talking about Drew Brees not being able to throw the ball downfield. So, you know, tight end is going to be a good option if that is true. I don't think it's true. Um, but if Brees, quote, unquote, can't throw the ball, then – a short tight end that can catch the ball is going to be a good option. Um, well, what about who Who are you sitting this week at the tight end position? I'm going to sit Hunter Henry at uh, Tampa Bay. You know, he, I'm pretty sure he's a top six, top seven tight end in the league. He's probably going to get his traditional four or five touches. But uh, Tem- Tampa Bay's only given up average 7.5 points per game to tight ends. And uh, I look for him to have a decent game. You know, he'll get a few receptions, like I said. Finding the end zone, I think, is going to be tough. So, uh, and you know, you never know with the quarterback situation with the Chargers, who we thought were going to have a good game last week, did not. Um, I think I think he's going to struggle, and I believe Tampa Bay is, like I said, you know, one of our sleeper teams. So I think they're starting to get in the groove, and uh, yeah, I, I'm I'm going to say Hunter Henry has a, a tough game this week. He's going to make my sit em list. Yeah, you touched on two topics right there that I think we can talk about on the podcast in a few minutes is how the Panthers Panthers played really well and the Chargers kind of upset us both. And then um, Tampa Bay, too. There's some interesting things going on down there in Tampa Bay with Gronk and Bruce Arians and whatnot. Um, but, yeah, so I'm going to stay in Florida, though, and I'm going with uh, Gasicki. I, he only had one catch last week against Jacksonville after being one of the top tight ends in the league through two weeks. Um, and... You know, if you get one catch against Jacksonville's defense, uh, I wouldn't expect much production against Seattle, who's one of the top defenses in the league. 
Uh, so Gasicki's going to have a rough week this week. Ryan Fitzpatrick's going to have a tough week. We're definitely not going to see Tua because I feel like if Tua gets in there and gets hurt, then it's all over. <laughs> and Seattle's de- or Miami's offense is no match for Seattle's defense. So keep Tua on the sideline this week. Yeah. Um, but that gets me right into my defensive point. I'm starting Seattle versus Miami. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick, he's a winning quarterback. Uh, that's about all he is. And he's not going to put up a lot of numbers. Miami is no match for Seattle's defense. Seattle's D could probably, um, I think, fantasy, do they still start with 10 points on defense? Um, yes. Yeah, so Seattle's going to stay around the 10 mark, force a couple turnovers, maybe get a defensive touchdown. Um, who knows what's going to happen with special teams. But if you have Seattle's defense, start them. And if you don't, go pick them up immediately. My uh, my defense start this week is going to be the Rams versus the Giants. You know, we talked about – the uh, Rams being good, efficient offensively this week. We believe they will. And defense hasn't necessarily been the defense we've seen for the Rams in, in recent years. Probably usually a top five. I don't know what they are this year. I believe they're like 12, 13 range. But, uh, you know, the last two weeks they've given up 35 points to the Bills and 19 to Philadelphia. But they have forced a total of five turnovers. And the Giants with, of course, no Saquon. You can't really trust their passing game. Not real, you know, very unsure about the Giants rushing game. So I like the Rams this week versus the Giants. Yeah, Rams have a good secondary too. You know, you, keep, you sometimes can forget that Jalen Ramsey is in, in L.A. now and not in Jacksonville. Um, yeah, and we're still waiting on a breakout game from Ramsey, which could happen at any point, yep. you know. Yeah, I feel like he's he, still got he's still got one of the best, if not the best defensive player in the league, Aaron Donald. So yep. rushing-wise, I don't think they give up much at all. I think if Giants want to get it done, it's got to be through the air. And I just don't think they can, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. And uh, I feel like since Jalen Ramsey's got in Los Angeles, you know, he's been kind of been kind of quiet, you know, um, not necessarily in the way that he hasn't performed well, just you don't you don't hear about him as much because there's so many good players in Los Angeles or in California altogether that he don't stand out as much as he did in Jacksonville right. where he was probably <laughs> – the best player on that team, definitely the best player on that defense. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm going to stay in the stay with the West Coast and go with the Raiders as my set this week on defense. Uh, going up against Buffalo um, and Josh Allen. Josh Allen's on a, row, a roll. Um, Man, what a guy! It's it's unreal, and I'm you know I'm I'm slowly but surely jumping on to the uh, bandwagon of the Bills. Um, mm-hmm. But you may see me in some Bills Mafia gear here soon. Uh, but uh, I don't know, man. I, I hope the Bills are legit. I think this is going to be a good week to kind of see a if the Bills are legit, and b are the Raiders legit? You know, the Raiders yeah. um, faced a really good team last week against New England. Um, the, that was a good test for them. They beat the Saints, who of course didn't have Michael Thomas, and the Saints are kind of struggling right now. But we we both know the Saints are going to be good later on as the year get, goes on. Um, so that was a good win for them. They've got some good weapons on offense. Uh, so I think that's going to be a good game this week, but I'm I'm sticking with Raiders on the def- or def- Raiders defense to stay on the bench going against the hot Josh Allen and Buffalo Bills. Uh, yeah, and speaking of the Patriots, they are my sit this week after, especially after seeing Kansas City demolish the number one uh, defense in the league last week. Patrick Mahomes, um, it's at home. You know, I know, like we said, you know, I know there's no fans, but I really don't think that's playing much of a factor this year uh, as much as I thought it would. But uh, New England, you know, top five defense. I think this week is a good time to sit them, if not pick up somebody else, just for one week. Uh, definitely would have them in my lineup going forward, but this week playing Kansas City, I like them on the bench this week. Yeah, I, I think everybody can agree with that. Kansas City is. Uh... A little slept on. You know, I don't think many people picked Kansas City to win last week, including myself, and that was just kind of yeah, me as well. how they performed against uh, the Chargers defense and then going up against the Ravens defense. Um, I think they were kind of pissed off a little bit because they knew nobody picked them to win, um, yeah. which the Ravens didn't play well either, um, so that didn't help. But Kansas City looked, they looked really good on Monday night. Yeah, definitely threw the ball well, and I think that is a repeat this week for uh, Mahomes. So that's another reason why I don't like the Patriots to start. Yeah, uh, interesting things going up there in New England as well uh, with Bill Belichick and Cam Newton. Um, 
a lot of interesting games this week. There's, I think fantasy is going to be really wild. Um, I think a lot of players that should perform won't. A lot of players that you wouldn't expect to perform will. Um, yeah. So it's going to be fun. You know, I know me and you are both going to be busy on Sunday, so we're not going to get to see all the games. Have to do a Shout lot of recap. Shout out to Doug. Shout out to Yeah. Wait, brother. Uh, got a big wedding coming up on Sunday that me and Matthew are going to be at, so we'll sneak in some red zone when we can. Um, Absolutely. But have to do have to do a lot of catching up uh, throughout the week for podcast number five, I guess, because college would be number four. Um, but yeah, so that that's this week's episode of Stardom Sitem from the Point After Guys. Uh, if you enjoyed, just go ahead and leave a thumbs up on the video, hit that subscribe button. We got some apparel coming soon. Not sure when. Uh, it's in the design process right now, being designed by one of our good friends that we graduated with. Um, I'll give him a shout out once it's designed and there for you guys to see. Uh, but yes, yeah, so if you have any questions about who you should start, who you should put in your lineup, this person or that person, you can send it to us on Twitter or leave it in the comments below. Um, you can also uh, DM either one of us on Twitter uh, or DM the TPA Twitter, whatever you want to do. Uh, whatever is easiest for you to get in contact with us, we're here to help you out. Um, but Matt, if you don't have anything else, then we will end this and go record the podcast. Yeah, and, and let me say this too. I will have a, uh, or we will both have a Facebook up and running soon. Uh, Facebook page, feel free to write on the wall any questions you have, especially fantasy. Um, we love fantasy, and uh, we take it pretty serious. It makes the game a whole lot more interesting for us. So yeah, any anytime you got questions, you guys just shoot them to us, and we'll respond as quick as we can. Yeah, so there's links in the description of the video to all our social media. We got TikTok, Twitter. Uh, gonna have Facebook up and going pretty soon. And of course, you guys are on YouTube. Um, if you have any interest in seeing a live version of the podcast, you can let us know that as well, and we'll start we'll start live streaming and maybe do some uh, you know live topics based on what you guys put in the chat, whether it be fantasy related or betting related or just anything you want to talk about. Um, we'll be sure to incorporate you guys as much as we can, but we appreciate you guys support so far. We've only been at it for about a week, uh, and got a lot of, got a lot of fans so far and, uh, we're looking forward to seeing this thing grow. Yep. So with that, uh, we will see you guys in the podcast, which will be uploaded tomorrow. Thanks guys.